Hey everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for following. I got a couple of new subscribers this week. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so by um, subscribing and hitting the little bell notification or alert so you get new videos every time I do a new video like this one. Um, I think based on this coronavirus and the fears that have been happening a lot this week with the markets just going up like crazy and then the next day they're going down like crazy. Um, and because this is a channel called Trade, Invest, Simplify, one of the things I wanted to talk about was minimalism. And I haven't really done that yet. I've done a lot of videos on instructional how to, you know, how to, how to trade, how to invest, all those kind of things. But I haven't done any on minimalism and the benefits of it. Um, mostly because there are so many videos already on YouTube about minimalism. Um, that doing another video on minimalism and the virtues of minimalism and the benefits of minimalism, like we all know it by now. It's easier to manage your house, you spend less money, you live outside more because you don't feel burdened by your house. It's, you know, uh, one of the things that I like about living in a smaller space is that it doesn't take me very long to clean. It takes me 10, 15 minutes, Swiffer vacuum, if I'm gonna clean the, the bathroom, if I'm gonna clean the whole kitchen, it takes a little longer. Um, but it's something that can be done pretty quick versus, you know, having a four bedroom house that I mortgaged to the, to the you know, hilt or whatever the expression is. Um, there are the benefits. We know those benefits. There are um, not very many downsides. Um, so there aren't a lot of cons to minimalism. Um, but what I wanted to talk about right now was the importance of living below your means all the time. We don't tend to do that. We can do it. Uh, when things are bad, as they are right now, and as they potentially could be going forward with this virus. But we don't live simply all the time, and there are some reasons and benefits to doing so that I wanted to talk about right now. And so the best way to do that is by telling you a story of a friend of mine who um, she, she would go through these prolonged periods of unemployment. And when she was unemployed, she would barely get by, but she would manage, and she would um, she would eat like ramen. She would eat cans of beans, cans of tuna. She would shop exclusively at the dollar store. Um, she would scrimp and save and get by however she could. She would sell her things on eBay to generate some income. She would live so far below her means that it was alarming in some ways. Um, but then she would also go through these prolonged periods of time where she was employed. And when she was employed, she was living the high life. She was buying the fancy shoes, the fancy handbags. Uh, she got a new car every couple of years. She was just like, the money's here and, and there it goes. I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying. And it was like a punish, like she could, she could suffer when things were bad. And when things were good, she had no memory of how bad things were. And one time I asked her and I said, why don't you save? If you know you're the type of person to have these prolonged periods of unemployment um, and depression, why don't you save for those moments? Live below your means all year so you can be comfortable when things are good and comfortable when things are bad. And she just shrugged it off and said that's not what she likes to do, which is fine. You want to live that way? Whatever. I think there are added benefits of living always below your means. Um, for example, if, uh, if you are living below your means, you're not buying excessive stuff all the time. I know we live in a consumer driven uh, economy where new shiny things are um, encouraged by corporate America. Uh, their advertising is brilliant. They tell you that your life sucks, right? That not outright, but they, they allude to it in their advertising, which their commercials are just brilliantly crafted um, ploys at tricking you into giving them more money. I think we all know this. Uh, you know, the Jaguar has a new commercial where the guy um, talks about how he needs a car that reflects his personality, and so he's got this cool, bright blue Jaguar SUV, and it's, you know, it's like a it's like a cell phone because there's touchscreen, and he can put his foot out, and the doors open, and all that stuff. Um, they find ways to market to us, so we are constantly filling the void that's making us depressed which subsequently is also not having enough money. The funny thing is if we weren't buying all these things, we might have more money and then could enjoy traveling a little bit more or um, maybe not a life of leisure, but a life with a little bit more leisure uh, in it. And um, that's the benefit of living a more streamlined, simplified life. 
in good times and in bad. But the biggest reason is because when we are going through something like what we're going through right now, which is a potential recession, maybe even it is a recession, um, this virus is causing a lot of panic and a lot of fear. If you live below your means, one of the options that you have right now is that maybe not immediately, maybe not this week or next week, but gradually if this virus really does become something that cripples our economy, this will be, as I hate to say it, Steve Mnuchin um, said the other day, a fantastic buying opportunity. The problem is right now, we have a society in which nobody knows about money. Schools don't teach it. Our parents don't teach it to us. Uh, if little kids ask their parents about money, um, they're dismissed, they're told. It's an impolite question, it's rude, mind your own business, go play in your room. They're not sitting down with those kids and saying, here's how money works. Um, so they're, they're creating a new generation of people who are coming into the world concerned, confused, not sure how any of this stuff works. Uh, nobody knows what stocks are. You know, ever since I started this channel, I've actually gotten a lot of messages from people asking, where do I get started? What is a stock? How do I buy a stock? Where do I buy stocks from? And um, so that's one of the problems that we face is just a general, um, not disinterest, but lack of education to this. Um, but the, the problem with that is we don't know who to listen to. And so we have guys like Jim Cramer, who are very smart, but on Monday last week, um, he came out and he said, now is a great time to buy. Buy this company, buy that company, and people rushed in and they bought those companies. On Tuesday, markets tanked, and he said, oh no, I'm sorry, what a terrible time to invest. And those same people were sitting there going, fuck, but I just bought. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll notice, or you maybe you'll remember one of the videos that I did the other day, was I was saying there are two kinds of investors. There's the one kind of investor who during a panic like this says, see, this is the reason I don't invest. And what ends up happening to that person is um, tremendous value is lost. People panic, they sell their stocks, they get out of markets, markets tank. They watch it from the outside as a non-investor and they go, that could have been me. I'm so glad I don't invest. And then what ends up happening 10 years later, after a boom, right? If you were thinking about the recession in 2008, gradually stocks improved and markets improved. And meanwhile, people were getting very wealthy because they had purchased during the recession, but not that guy. The guy in our example is sitting there going, ah, no, I don't know about this investing until we get to a point where we were about two years ago when markets were hitting new highs all the time. And every time you turned on the news, Markets at all-time highs, markets at all-time highs, markets at all, jobs are better, economy is better, all these things are better. And that guy in our example is finally sitting on the outside going, you know what, maybe now I should get in. The problem is that he's getting in at the very top of the market. He's getting in at the very, very top when uh, the news and the media is saying, wow, record high, record high, record high. Some financial experts are saying, uh-oh, maybe we're overextended here. And that is when the guy in our example goes all in. He doesn't know anything about stock. He doesn't know anything about finances. He doesn't know anything about anything when it comes to this world. And he's just listening to the news and listening to the reporters and listening to some people on, on television or on podcasts or whatever. And he goes all in. And the problem is then this happens. Markets tank and he loses a tremendous amount of value, 30 or 40% of his account in three weeks. And he's sitting there kicking and going, fuck, this is why I didn't invest. And now I got hurt. And the other flip side to that are people who recognize the buying opportunity. Now, if you are living simply and embracing minimalism, when a market sell-off like this happens, hopefully, since you're living below your means, you've got reserves of cash at the ready for a time just like this. In 2008, when the recession hit, I had been living at home and I had been working um, I was in my mid-20s, early to mid-20s, so I had a lot of money saved up, but I didn't have any education when it came to stocks. Um, but I, I knew that anyone who bought um, investments during the recession in 1920s, or the, um, the Depression, the Great Depression, probably did okay for themselves in the long term, because that's what stocks do, right? They go up in the long term. Um, so... I bought. 
I only bought a little because like I said, I didn't have the education and the knowledge and the confidence back then. Now I have the confidence um, to buy and that's what I'm doing. And that's what a benefit of minimalism is that usually goes unspoken is. If you have large reserves of money because you are living below your means, whether that means you have one kid instead of four or five or even zero kids, whether it means you have um, one car or no cars, whether it means you live in a five bedroom house or a one bedroom or a studio, if you, if you embrace minimalism all the time, it generally means that you, hopefully, if you're keeping your expenses down, if you don't have unreasonable amounts of debt, you have some reserves right now that you can play with. Now is a very good time, like Mnuchin said, like Jim Cramer said, to at the very least start thinking about buying. And if you don't have the knowledge and you don't know what to buy and you don't know when to buy, remember, think of it like this. We're heading into a recession. If a stock is $100 and it goes down to 20 and you buy all of it, 100 shares, let's say you want 100 shares, you're wiping out your whole reserve. You're spending all of your $8,000 to get that one 100 shares of that company at eight bucks. And the problem with that is stocks are incrementally heading lower. So if it's 100 and then it's 80 and you think, well, I don't know when the bottom is. I want to get in on this stock. I want to buy a little bit. Um, I don't want to miss the opportunity if markets turn around, but I also don't want to go all in in case it goes lower. The strategy here is to buy a little bit at a time. 25 shares at 80, up it goes down to 60, another 25 shares, up it goes down to 50, another 25 shares. By that point, maybe an earnings report comes out. Of course, it's going to be bad because we're in a recession. It drops down even lower. You buy a little bit more at say 39 or $40 a share. And that's the strategy is to just keep adding because 10 years from now, you're not going to remember whether you bought it at this price or that price. You're just going to remember that you bought stock during the uh, coronavirus epidemic or outbreak or whatever. And by that time, you'll have made a significant amount of money because the general hope is that if you're buying blue chip, high paying dividend stocks, that over time they go up. If you're wasting your money buying stupid, risky penny stocks, that's a waste of money. Who are those companies? If you're spending your money and your time buying good stuff, uh, generally, it doesn't really matter when you buy. Obviously, you want to pay a lower price if possible, right? I wouldn't be going in and buying stocks immediately, but I would be compiling a list and I would be looking over my reserves, my cash in, the account, in my bank accounts. If you embrace minimalism, you're going to ride through times like this. Not only personally, right? Because uh, you don't have... You're not living extravagantly. You don't have a Mercedes car payment. You have a Toyota Prius car payment. Um, you don't have a five bedroom house. You have a one bedroom house. Um, so if you're embracing minimalism all the time, you're not hitting panic mode right now. At least you shouldn't be. You should be sitting there going, I've got a good reserve. I've got a lot of money saved up. And this is going to be a great opportunity to buy some stocks and build wealth over the long term. Don't worry about right now. Right now, things will get worse, and then they'll get even worse, and then they'll maybe get even a little worse after that. Um, Ten years from now, this will pay off. I said it in an Instagram post, and I'll say it again here. This market will create either cowards or millionaires. You don't want to be the guy in that example that I was talking about earlier who misses out on the great buying opportunities and gets in when it's too late. You want to be the guy who's buying during the 2008 recession. You want to be the buy guy who's buying in the 1929 Great Depression. You want to be those guys who's buying when everyone else is going, are you crazy? Uh, so that's a benefit of minimal, minimalism that most people don't think about, don't talk about. Um, I hope you found it interesting. I think uh, if you did, please like and subscribe to this video. Hit the bell notification so you'll uh, get an alert every time I do a new video. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, please do that too. All the links are below. And thanks for watching. Have a good day.